Hi, this is Bob Waterman from Best Incorporated. In this session on BGA Rework, a primer, this is the second in our series, and what we'll be dealing with today is the topic of site dressing. In our previous discussion, we talked about the removal of devices. In this section, we're going to be talking about the dressing or the preparation of the site prior to placement of the BGA. So the objective of site dressing is to properly clean up the remaining solder and in some cases remove the lead to less than 0.1% lead by weight, flatten the solder without damaging the PCB or the nearby components. So that's the objective of this, the second step in the BGA rework process. Now there's a variety of different methods one can use for the site dressing once the device has come off. The most common for most rework jobs is by the use of a blade tip or a soldering iron and wick usually associated and in combination with flux. So after the BGA is removed, there is residual solder left, by the way, both on the device and the pads, as we see here in the picture. And these solder volumes are not uniform in shape or height, yet they're uneven after their separation of the BGA. And our objective, again, in this part of the process is to flatten out and remove that solder and make sure the remnants are as consistent as possible. Now, there are a variety of different methods. We're showing you the solder, braid, and wick method here. And it's a uh, function of how much space that you have, the type of equipment available. The me first method we'll show you here, uh, most people already have this type of equipment. The training of the operators, uh, this particular method that we're going to show you is highly training dependent and skill dependent. How much time that you have and how what your turn time needs to be uh, for the given BGA rework, how much the board is worth, and the reliability required based on the end use environment of the device. So let's see a master instructor teach us how to do this technique by watching this video. BGA site preparation. To perform this procedure, you will need no clean flux, number five solder wick, and a blade soldering iron tip. Note that one side of the blade tip is straight and the opposite side is beveled. The beveled side is placed down toward the board surface. To choose the solder wick correct for your operation, select a size that is slightly wider than the bevel on the soldering iron tip. To begin the procedure, apply flux to both the surface of the board and the solder wick. When applying the wick and iron to the surface of the circuit board, use a straight down and straight up movement. Do not slide the wick across the surface. Sliding may cause damage to the solder mask, board substrate, or may cause damage to the pads. Apply the wick and the iron together. Pause a moment and allow the solder to flow into the solder wick, and then remove the wick and the iron at the same time. If the iron is removed before the wick, it is possible that the wick may become attached to the pads. Do not panic. Do not pull the wick. Simply reapply the iron and heat the connection. The wick will desolder from the pads, at which point you can remove it from the pads. Continue wicking all of the BGA pads. If the solder wick becomes full of solder, trim off the used portion of the wick. Apply flux to both the remaining pad areas and the fresh wick length. When all of the pads have been wicked, clean the area with a brush and isopropyl alcohol. Move the brush in a circular motion to scrub the entire area and then dab any remaining flux residue and IPA with a lint-free wipe. Inspect the area to ensure that all pads are clean and level. If any pads have residual solder, wick those pads again until all pads are level. Any remaining solder may cause coplanarity issues when a new BGA is installed at the site.
The BGA site preparation is now complete, and the site is ready for the installation of a new BGA component. So that was the blade tip method. We have to be careful to not scratch the mask, and we have to be careful to apply the proper heat in a very light pressure so as not to damage any pads. So that particular method, though fast and not requiring a lot of uh, uh, equipment, extra equipment, is highly dependent on the skill of the operators. The next method is the automatic site redressing method. Typically we have, and what we see here in this picture, is a nozzle, and the nozzle blows hot air while at the same time creating a negative pressure of vacuum force that once the solder is reflowed, extracts or pulls up the solder into and through that nozzle. There are different size nozzles for different geometries. Many times these tools are placed on XY robots and the tool is programmed to move back and forth and move at a set height using some type of height sensing circuitry to make sure that we don't scratch the mask or damage any nearby parts. Now this is a slower method, but it does eliminate the issue of pulled pads and scratched mask. Good systems go about three millimeters per second. In many cases flux is not used uh, with this technique because the nozzles clog easily. So many times we are asked about which method to use or different vendors or different process techs have different methods for reballing or deballing. What we see here is we see an operator holding, in this case, the BGA over a solder fountain which can do the deballing. This can also be done on the board side. Now, what, the reason this particular method is employed vis-a-vis -vis the wicking and braid approach is there's no uh, damage to the mask and little chance for the pads to be lifted. In this case, especially with sac alloys, though, we could have pad erosion as the high tint content will certainly impact and solubilize some of the copper surface in terms of the pads, and the pads will thin out. The other problem with this particular solder fountain approach is that we actually go through a thermal excursion, especially if we're deballing a BGA. In fact, um, in a recent study where a thermal couple was embedded into an active device, with wicking braid we saw a temperature at the peak of around 180 degrees below reflow temperature, whereas the solder fountain actually counts as a thermal excursion because the dye temperature goes beyond uh, that of the reflow um, or, or gets near the reflow temperature of the uh, of the solder. In this particular study a thermal couple again was embedded inside the dye and we see here that the nominal temperature is about 150 degrees C um, measuring it as we are deballing it and again, this is on a BGA, where the peak temperature is around 180 degrees, but though not for very long. Whereas for the solder fountain, we are peaking out around the 230 degree temperature range, that's degree Celsius, and um, having a nominal temperature of around 217 degrees. So higher temperatures, and we are actually going through a thermal excursion. We see here in this photograph some of the problems if we don't properly train the operators to wick as demonstrated in the video. We can get the scratched mask as shown by the in the area near the rework areas. We can also have damaged pads. Um, the final technique that we're um, that one can use when deballing a device is we can use a copper coupon. This copper coupon can be placed on the uh, other side, on the nozzle side of a hot air rework system, come down, and it would be a 
approximately the package length and width. Um, it would be heated up in flux, pre-fluxed, and the whole copper coupon would, in essence, wick up the remnant solder to a flat surface, and then that coupon would be thrown out. With the price of copper, you can imagine that's, uh, that's not a very viable process. So thanks for joining us on part two, and that is the site preparation technique. We talked about three, four different techniques here for removing the remnant solder either on devices or on the board side and some of the pluses and minuses of each of them. So join us next week for part three where we'll talk about BGA placement. Talk to you then.